the Saudi uh, foreign minister has said this could take hours, days, even weeks. What do you think the intention is? When will it be mission accomplished? You know, this one has to think of this in a more strategic way, in a, in a more wider way, if you like. Uh, Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states, and mainly the Sunni Arab world, has been really feeling the pinch from their people because Iran has, try, has been trying and indeed succeeding in expanding its proxy wars in the Middle East, specifically in, in countries like Syria, for example, which is predominantly a, a Sunni, of course. Uh, also in Lebanon, uh, where I come from, also in Iraq, as we have seen, and now in Yemen. Now, Yemen is really the backyard of Saudi Arabia, and also it has the Babel Mandab, as you know, which a lot of the oil goes from. So this is a really important strait. Physically speaking, it can't Abs be blocked. Absolutely. Also, also, it has the longest territory, you know, the border with, with Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is, of course, uh, as, as we all know, is more or less the leader of, of, the, of that part of the world together with Egypt. Uh, so there was a lot of pressure from many people in that part of the world, and I, I, I was recently there um, back a week ago, uh, where people are talking, oh, the Sunnis uh, have no gods, and, and they buy all these weapons, all these countries, and they don't use them. Iran has been particularly rather mean also with its media outlets by, you know, reminding the Saudis and others that they are being, they are taking one Arab country after another. And do you think there's also pressure on the, the new king, in a way, to prove himself in Riyadh? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, uh, not only the new, the new king, but the whole Saudi establishment. Also, let's not forget, uh, this is a Sunni-Shia divide, which is, they're all, both Muslims, uh, as we all know, it's just there's very minor difference. So this is really political. Also playing in the background as well is the Persian Arab factor. Many people, including Shias in the area, are saying, wait a minute, I mean, although I'm a Sunni or a Shia, but I'm an Arab, I'm not, I'm not a Persian. So th th there, is, there is a lot going on. Also, of course, people want influence. Iran is trying to influence. Ever since Khomeini came to power, they pledged to transport uh, their, their revolution. And indeed, this is exactly what they're trying and to do. To add to all these factors laying on top Absolutely. of each other, you have Washington, don't you, which is President Obama very keen on a rapprochement, a deal with Iran. And yet the Americans are offering some logistical support to the Saudi-led coalition here. I, I think you hit a very important point. I think as we speak, the deal is being sealed. And I think what the Saudis and also other Arab partners uh, and, and others, other uh, like Turkey today came, came to say, you know, I'm willing to, to support this and I do support it and anybody needs help, I'm here, is because of this deal that is going to be sealed and signed quite soon. Because... People are afraid that Iran is going to be even more emboldened. Uh, you know, I think uh, Iran has sort of crossed the line. While Saudi Arabia didn't really want uh, to, to come into a war or for many reasons, you know, the Saudis are busy trying to develop their countries. They want to try and, and send their girls and boys to school. They're trying. There's a lot of changes in Saudi Arabia. It's a very uh, fluid situation, isn't it? Absolutely, we which threatens also the world oil, let's not forget. So hopefully... It will be contained, the houses will come to their senses, they will come to the table, and the war doesn't have to be extended. Or Maria Al Moon, we have to leave around. it there, but thank you for giving us some insight into Saudi motivations here and the big picture in the, re in the region.